We know to know the plan of weekend people, which means the people of the West who may call the Lusania tribe upon whose ancestral land, the land of the great oak and the weeping rocks of the the mountain we worship today. We recognize with gratitude the Lusania's elders, past and present, who have and continue to care for this region. We seek to partner in continuing, continuing the stewardship and working for just peace. to the United Church of the Valley. As a progressive Christian community, we believe that following the path and teachings of Jesus can lead to an experience of the sacred and the oneness and unity of all life. We also affirm that teachings of Jesus provide but one of many ways to experience the sacred. We can draw from diverse sources of wisdom on our spiritual journey. So wherever you are on your journey, you are welcome here. We know that the way we have we have we the way we behave towards one another is the fullest expression of what we believe. Welcome to you who are here in the building and welcome to you who are here joining us online. And let's stand please. That's
morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How many of you can see in your heart's eye when the bell is tolling Linda doing this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then this. Yes. And Jerry. <laughs> what a memory. Will you join with me in the call to presence? <coughs> the sun rises in justice, sustaining and life affirming justice. We work, we work bring the goodness, healing, and to end divisions between any and all of our fellow humans. By seeing no stranger, we can begin to end injustice and show God's love to those who most need to see it. The sun sets in peace, allowing for shalom. We will see the peace of friendship with God and see no stranger in any living thing. Hear our desires, O Holy One, as we seek this morning to be more mindful of your ways of justice and of peace. Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a Samaritan woman? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans, except for thirst. <laughs> Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks, to drink from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The, the, the water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so I may never be thirsty or having come back here 
to draw water. Jesus said to her, go call on your husband and come back. I want to pause here and talk about how polite Jesus' words are to these women. <laughs> okay, back to the story. <laughs> the woman answered, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you are right in saying you have no husband, for you have had five husbands. And the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I see that you are a prophet, our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that this place is where the people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to Jesus, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ, and when he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. And Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came, and they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city, and she said to the people, Come, come and see the man who has told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah. Can he? They left the city where... They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. And Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me to complete his work. Do you not say four months more then comes the harvest, but I tell you, look around and see the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. And he told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you have said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. I want to say uh, just a quick word before I get started. I've been to this place. I've been to the well. And when I say to you, it's in the middle of nowhere, it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> You, it's not something you would trip on. Let's just say that. It has to be something that's intentional to go and visit. It was leaving Israel on the way to Sinai, literally in the middle of nowhere, is this well that provides life and water to quench thirst. And I want you to have that image of the middle of nowhere finding something that offers life. Would you join with me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and then the living out of these words be wholly acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Jesus was not supposed to be there that day. 
In fact, no one was supposed to be there that day at that time. She went to the well in the heat of the day precisely for that reason, to encounter no one, to see no one, and even more importantly, to not be seen. She went in the heat of the day to avoid those deeply personal conversations. Or even more, she went in that day to avoid those deep and loud whispers that you sort of hear but can't really hear when you know someone's talking about you. Everyone else would have gone in the morning or in the evening to collect their water. And around that watering hole during those different times, there would have been laughing, there would have been sharing, there would have been chatting, probably a little bit of gossiping. It would have been busy. But not at that time of the day, and not the woman. You see, noon was the best time to avoid contact with those you want to hold at a distance. Everybody know those people? But then there was Jesus, and he was there, and he was sitting there, and he was tired, and he was thirsty. And when she saw him as she was approaching, I'm sure she was shocked, and there was this question of, do I run, or do I just go and hope he doesn't know me, and hope he doesn't say something to me. But it had been a long journey to the well, and not only did she need water to gather for her home, she was probably thirsty. She made that journey in the heat of the day. And then Jesus had the audacity to speak. The one thing she didn't want by going at noon, and he asked her for a drink. A Samaritan. And a Jewish man. A Samaritan woman. Now, I know those of us who grew up in the church, we have this sort of caricature or cartoon image of a Samaritan and Jesus encounter, right? Because of the good Samaritan story. There's not really such a thing as a good Samaritan here in this time. Samaritan woman and a Jewish man talking was really unheard of. And when, when he asked her, she told him, why would you talk to me? Why would you ask me? Why didn't you bring your own bucket to get from the well? And then he turns it around and he offers her something different, right? Living water. And what is that? Living water is what Jesus promised that day at the well. And she says, you don't have a bucket. Where are you getting this living water from? Living water. She had no idea what that meant. She only knew that he was a Jewish rabbi sitting by the well, first asking her for water and then turning it around into something she had never heard about before. Living water. And truly, this becomes a familiar story to us, right? The story of thirst quenched. The story of life transformed. The woman who didn't want to talk to anyone runs back and gathers and talks to as many people as she could find. Because her life has been changed. The story is one of needs met in a place, in a space she was trying to avoid being seen being talked to, and then she leaves that place seen as if she's never been before. <clears throat> but as I was considering this text this week, I think sometimes we need a modern retelling of some of these stories, and so I have one or two for you today. Enslaved for years, enslaved for more years than she could count, you see, she had been separated from her family, those who survived that treacherous ride in the belly of the boat from her beloved homeland of Africa and sold, as if humans can be sold, to a family in Kentucky. 
And on that farm in Kentucky, in the heat of the summer, she was being worked to death. Every day, the same terrible work. Every day, the same terrible conditions. Every day, waking up with very little hope. And then she started talking to a man working in the same ways with very little hope. And they fell in love. And they quietly got married. And then she got pregnant. And she said to him, I will never let my child be born here and be raised here and have the same future that we have. She had no desire to bring a child up in those ungodly conditions. And so one night, after weeks of planning and consideration, after all the lights had gone out in the big house, they ran. They took a few scraps from what they had gathered in the days before, and they tucked it in their pockets, and they ran, and they ran as fast as they could. And then they got to the river with no knowledge how to swim, and out of nowhere a boat and a lantern, and on it was Mr. Ripley. And he was a free black man with a boat who was willing to risk everything to help her and him across the water. They got across the mostly calm waters that night in the dead of the night. The skies were dark, barely illuminated, with a few stars out. And when they got to the shore on the other side of the Ohio River, they turned around to thank him. And he said there was no time for that. And he pointed up the hill to that one little house that still had its light out on. And he said, that's the Rankin house. I want you to run as fast as you can up the hill, even when you hear the whistles, even when you hear the dogs. I want you to run as fast as you can up to that Rankin house. And you knock like this. And they'll let you in. And so they ran as fast as they could. They heard the dogs barking, they heard the whistles, but somehow late that night, they made it to the Rankin house. And they did the knocking that they were told, and they were immediately swooped in to the house, and much to their surprise, the Rankins were white. And as they were still catching their breath, Mrs. Rankin put on a pot of coffee and she got on her knees and she started to tend to their wounds on their feet, that the, head, the rocks and the brush that had ripped them apart on their journey up that hill. And when the coffee was over, they sat at the table together and drank a pot of coffee. These two enslaved people who found their way to the Rankin house, had their first cup of coffee ever with a white man and a white woman. And as they were drinking their coffee, Reverend Rankin found a pair of shoes for both of them because it was going to be a long journey. And he told them the next house that they would go to and to do the same exact knock that they had done there. And that would be their journey for months to run in the dead of the night, hoping to find the next house that would hold them safe harbor, the next home that had white people in it, that would give them a place to stay. And they did that for months until they made it to Lakeshore, Canada, and they found John Wall. And John Wall welcomed it in to their village. And he fed them, and he gave them some money, and he let them ring the bell, the bell of freedom, the bell that's like the well, where they found life, where they found hope, where they knew that now her six months pregnant, when her baby was born, it would be born into freedom. A story of thirst quenched and of lives transformed.
You see, at the well, she went to be filled. She went in the heat of the day so she wouldn't run into anyone. She went as a daily chore. And who she encountered there gave her something she could have never dreamed. At the well, she arrived tired. She arrived alone. She arrived parched. She arrived out of routine of her daily needs, not knowing her life was about to change. At the well, many of us go parched. We wear ourselves with the daily grind. And we look for the wells that will fill us, that will give us living water. And I believe at the well is still the place where we find hope. At the well is where we can find acceptance of who we are. At the well, we can find even meaning. At the well is where we care for one another. At the well, sometimes we may even find forgiveness or offer forgiveness. At the well, we can find blessing. At the well, we can find our strength again. At the well, we can find encouragement and maybe even at the well, we can find healing. At the well, I know there's a presence of love and of acceptance in the presence of the divine. During the season, may we all find our way to the well to know that hope and love. May it be so. As a beloved community, we care about one another and share our joys and our sorrows and concerns together each and every week. Every week we gather our joys and our concerns in our community through email or through these cards. So please join me in prayer. We pray this day for our community and our nation and for the world. We pray for peace and safety and justice for all people of the world but especially those currently experiencing escalating violence for the people of Israel, for the people of Palestine, for Gaza, for Ukraine, Sudan, Syria, Nigeria, Somalia, and Myanmar, and the other places of deadly conflicts of Haiti in our world. Comfort them, O oh God, even as your heart breaks. Protect them, even as you call for justice, and grant us compassion for all your people. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for ourselves and for our families and our friends and our neighbors and those who are alone. We offer prayers for a joy for Emily's uh, space as it continues to get more volunteers and the numbers of youth continue to grow. Um, prayers of gratitude that this place is able to provide a, a safe space for the queer youth in our community. Remind me what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> Together we pray. <laughs> uh, continuing prayers for Ruth Sharp's healing, prayers for Sherry Ann and Ruth's family, and also the medical staff uh, for guidance uh, for the best course of action. Together we pray. Yes. Prayers for William, who's at Rady Hospital ICU with RSV and the entire family. Came down with the virus. Well. And as of Friday, William is continuing to get stronger and their family is also recovering. Continuing prayers for recovery, uh, which will be a long process. Talk to Sandy if you can help with meals uh, for the family. Together we pray. Yes. Um, this is from Donna. Donna and Christy attended Zoom meeting for a conference and elected Reverend Rachel Pryor as our new conference minister. Um, together we pray. Yes. And it says that Don will attend the annual meeting for the Southern Association Association via Zoom 
today. Um, here's another joy for Emily Space that is embarking on a new phase in leadership. Um, thank you to the Ortegas for that, for sure. And uh, please for, pray for all those involved to speak with kindness and patience. Together we pray. Yes. Uh, joys for Isabel Marks. Um, Isabel has a concert this weekend, this Wednesday, excuse me. Together we pray. Yes. Uh, I'd ask for prayers for Jordan, who broke the wrist in two different spots um, a couple of weeks ago when we finally got it taken care of this week and has a new cast on it. It's waterproof, what? so that's kind of cool. <laughs> yes. um, anyway, uh, yeah, just prayers that it heals um, well. Together we pray. Okay. I invite us into a moment of holy silence. No matter how we understand prayer, we find that it is good to pray. Together we hold these names, these words, spoken and unspoken, in a spirit of concern, in a spirit of joy, in a spirit of connection, and now in a spirit of prayer. Oh, great love, thank you for living and loving in and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings. Listen to our hearts, longings, and for the healing of our world. We offer these prayers in all the holy names of God. And now let us pray together in one voice the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. First, the common version that connects us to our grandparents and great-grandparents. And then let us pray another version that speaks to many of our longings and understandings today. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forget our debtors. Save us from a time of trouble, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Loving Spirit, who is in heaven and within us, we call upon your names. Your wisdom come, your will be done, in all the spaces in which you dwell. Give us each day sustenance and perseverance. Remind us of our limits as we raise these limits of others. Separate us from temptation of empire, but deliver us into your community. For you are the dwelling place within us, the empowerment around us, and the celebration among us. Now and forever. At the United Church of the Valley, we seek to be inclusive of all people. We strive for peace and justice among all people. We strive to protect and restore the integrity of our earth. We commit to a path of lifelong learning, compassion, and love. We invite you to be a part of this mission, and we thank you for your generosity. There is a collection plate on the organ for those who are here in person, and of course, all of us can make a donation by going to our website, ucbchurch.org or you can use either Venmo or PayPal. Of course, you can always mail checks to our mailing address, PO Box 1312, Marietta, California, 92564.
Now is the time when we pass the peace as an act of forgiveness and reconciliation. Jesus told his disciples that before they come to be reconciled with God, they should first reconcile with one another. And so during this time of sharing Christ's peace, you are encouraged to seek and to offer forgiveness. When we turn to those around us with the greeting, may the peace of Christ be with you, and respond with, and also with you, we symbolize our unity even in the midst of divisions. When we pass the peace, we practice God's call to make every effort to maintain the bond of peace. Let us wave our peace to each other. May the peace of Christ be with you. together for this we gather together for this time of holy communion we're reminded that this is um, an open table that everyone is open and invited to receive this meal of life and of grace and of love um, I feel like I would be a bad Irish person if I didn't say something about St. Patrick's Day today so <laughs> I found this uh, my great grandfather would be upset if I didn't say something so um, I found this blessing here uh, that I thought was appropriate for, um, for communion. When the first light of sun, bless you. When the long day is done, bless you. In your smiles and in your tears, bless you. Through each day of your years, bless you. Just a little Irish blessing for you this morning. I would just say this is really hard. This gets harder and harder every time we do communion, knowing that there's a whole place in our world, where there's so many places in our world where people are hungry, but especially in Gaza, that children are literally dying because they don't have bread and they don't have water. And so I, I looked that up today as we share our meal. Usually we say, on World Communion, we honor all the others that are sharing in a meal, but I'm mindful that there's a lot that aren't needy because of war and destruction, and it's nice to read my Irish blessing, but I hope that they are blessed in the midst of all that is happening. Um, and so as we remember the meal that Jesus shared, he took bread and he gave thanks to God, and he broke it, and he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples, and to take from this eat, all of you, do this every time you eat it in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, we take the cup, and he likewise gave thanks to God, he blessed it, and he poured it out for his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you, this is the love that is poured out for you, and for many, um, every time you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. O oh God, pour out your spirit on these gifts of bread and of juice. Make them be for us the body and life and love of God, that it would strengthen us, that it would quench our thirst, that it would give us hope, that we would know grace and love. In Jesus' name. Amen.
the bread of life and the cup of God's love poured out for you, broken for you. Will you join with me in prayer? Holy God, we have eaten the bread and drunk the wine. We have been touched by your spirit and are thankful. Still speaking, God, as we go from this place to be your church in the world, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit be our guide and strength today and in the days to come. Amen. Those who are able, if you'd like to stand for the closing uh, song. I got a trick. 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 I got a tr